In this video we're going to talk about implicit differentiation and I'm going to assume that you know about ordinary differentiation at least as far as the chain rule. So if you haven't studied that I would recommend going back to that first. Implicit differentiation arises where we're looking at a relation here that's defined implicitly. So for example x squared plus y squared equals 25 is implicit because I don't just have a formula y equals a function of x. Okay, it represents this circle and there's no way of defining it just as y equals a function of x because for example there are points on here, uh, for example here I've got three, the point 3, 4 in the circle and I've also got 3 minus 4. Okay, so if there was a function that would just give us the x coordinates so I think it gives us the y coordinate from the x coordinate it could never work because if you put in x equals 3 it would have to give you both 4 and minus 4 as the as the output. And it would be the same problem if we had to define the derivative in terms of x. Okay, so here uh, at this point the derivative is the gradient of the green tangent here and at this point uh, it's this one here. So again I've got a negative gradient for this top point and a positive gradient for the bottom one. So a simple, uh, a simple formula that would say something like uh, dy by dx is equal to a function of x is just never going to work here, right? But we might hope to find something like dy by dx is equal to a function of both uh, x and y. In fact the gradients uh, of these two tangents are not too uh, hard to work out. If you remember some of your circle theorems, um, if I were to put uh, some radii uh, in here and remember that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius, we can quite quickly see that uh, the gradient of this first radius here is uh, 4 thirds, so the tangent is perpendicular to that, so it has to have gradient minus 3 quarters, and similarly uh, the other radius has gradient minus 4 thirds, so this tangent uh, has gradient plus 3 quarters, and we'll use that to check what we do in a second. So how do I think about the derivative of a curve defined implicitly? Well, we have to use uh, the chain rule. Okay, So for example, uh, let's say I was trying to uh, find the derivative of uh, a function like 3x plus 5 squared. Okay, We apply the chain rule, so we get 2 times 3x plus 5, and we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 3, so we get 6 times 3x plus 5. Okay, and in general, if I'm differentiating uh, something like y squared, okay, where I'm thinking that y is related to x, okay, so it's not a constant, it's, uh, it's not necessarily a function of x as such, but x and y might be in a relationship a bit like, a bit like this, or uh, or in some more complicated relationship, then applying the chain rule I would look at this same structure and say okay well I'd have to do 2 times y and then I'm going to multiply by uh, dy by dx, okay, and that would be following exactly the same structure we had here, right, so if I have d by dx of you know, x cubed plus 5 squared, I get 2 times x cubed plus 5, that would be my 2y, and I'd multiply by uh, dy by dx. So actually differentiating things implicitly formulaically is relatively easy. If I have something that is a function of y that's related to x, to differentiate it with respect to x, I just write down its derivative with respect to y and then multiply by dy by dx. And we can use that idea to deal with uh, this circle, okay, so this circle again, same one I've got here, x squared plus y squared equals 25, so let's start with that uh, equation and differentiate both sides with respect to x, so I get d by dx of x squared plus y squared is d by dx of 25. Um, this is something you'll get used to in implicit differentiation problems that uh, you know, a valid thing to do to both sides of an equation here is to differentiate it with respect to x. And 
differentiating x squared, I get just 2x as usual. Now y squared I have to differentiate implicitly, so I get 2y multiplied by dy by dx. And on the right hand side, the derivative of 25, well it's just a constant, so that's zero. And what you can see we've got here is now something that we can rearrange to make dy by dx the subject. Okay, so I've got 2y times dy by dx is equal to minus 2x, and then dy by dx dividing by 2y is equal to minus x divided by y. Okay, so I've got here, um, I've got here a formula for the gradient of this circle at all of the different points, and as we notice, it doesn't just depend on x, it also depends on y. And we can look back and see that that does, uh, does work for the points we had earlier. dy by dx is minus x over y, and I want the gradient at, say, this point here, 3, 4. Okay, then I've got that dy by dx is equal to the uh, minus the x coordinate divided by the y coordinate, so that's minus 3 over 4 and that's the gradient of this tangent here. If I looked at the point 3 minus 4, I'd get minus 3 over minus 4, which is uh, plus 3 quarters. So implicit differentiation gives us a way of uh, defining gradients for, uh, for curves that are defined implicitly. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, you know, the actual mechanics here of, uh, of working out the implicit derivatives uh, then are reasonably straightforward, right? If I want to do d by dx of y squared, we've just seen we get 2y multiplied by dy by dx. We're just using the chain rule here. Um, if I wanted to do d by dx of y to the power of 4, then I would just differentiate my function ordinarily with respect to y, and then it would be multiplied by dy by dx by the chain rule. We're thinking of y kind of containing that inside function we think of when we do the chain rule. Okay, so I could write down any number of these really, d by dx of sine of y would be cosine of y multiplied by dy by dx, d by dx of uh, e to the 3y, differentiate it with respect to y and get 3e to the 3y, and then I would multiply by dy by dx. Okay, so um, so hopefully uh, reasonably easy to actually do the mechanics of it. Of course we can make these problems uh, tougher by doing things like uh, let's try and do now uh, d by dx of x times y. Okay, and now I'm going to use the product rule. Uh, write that down here. So if I'm differentiating u times v, I get u v dashed plus u dash v. Okay, so here I have x multiplied by dy by dx, uh, and then u dash times v, that would be uh, x differentiated to give 1, just multiplied by y, so I get x times dy by dx plus y. Right? I could do d by dx of uh, x cubed times sine of y. Okay. So here we're going to take u is x cubed, so u dashed is 3x squared, and we're going to have v is sine of y, so v dashed is going to be cos of y times dy by dx. So applying the product rule here, we get uh, x cubed times cos of y times dy by dx and then plus u dash times v, so plus 3x squared multiplied by sine of y. Okay, so um, so we can uh, look at these sorts of more complicated uh, problems and we can apply some logic to differentiate them implicitly. And this is going to be most useful to us when these are objects that form part of an equation as we have with the circle earlier. I'll make uh, another video where we look at some more problems applying this uh, in context.